Hey, what's good? Thanks for pressing play on another Bite Down Boxing video. I'm the host of the Bite Down Boxing podcast, R.L. Woodson, or just Wood. Uh, getting ready to get into this Brant uh, Bass Song Groove uh, Friday Night Fights. Top rank on ESPN. First, I want to send a big shout out to the Round by Round Boxing uh, family. My round by round boxing family, uh, place that I kind of got to go mainstream right in boxing. Got the t-shirt for, uh, shout out to Alex, everybody else, the rest of the staff, but got the t-shirt for being the, uh, picking the best, uh, or winning the, the, the fight prediction um, thing from last year. Not really a contest, but just, uh, you know, I had the best uh, percentage of uh, picking fights in 2018. So shout out to myself for getting that done and uh, paying attention to what's going on. But let's jump into this, man. Um, in the opener, Joshua Greer Jr. against Giovanni Escanner. Uh, feel free to check out the the, the uh, interview that I had with Joshua Greer maybe a week and a half ago. Also, it's an article out there on Round by Round Box. Actually, it's on both. Uh, I put it up in Round by Round Boxing first. Uh, just talking to uh, to Greer going into this fight, seeing where he was. He had an interesting, some interesting remarks, and uh, you know what his future plans were in the game, and um, you know how he's, you know, the hard work and commitment that's gotten him to where he is. Uh, so feel free to check that out. He also talks about the champion that he'd like to face at uh, at bantamweight. So um. Tonight, you know, he got knocked down in the uh, in the third round. Started the fight pretty good. I didn't think he was as sharp. Um, I, I, I agree with Pullman. I think it was said. I think he was looking to put on a big show. Started a little too quickly. Uh, went away from his, his jab and being sharp and smart. And engaged a little bit too much. And uh, wasn't as sharp. Uh, defensively, as we talked about that in the in the uh, the video um, that's down in the playlist, but um, you know he clearly was more athletic than the guy. Quickness, um, you know, something being down there at bantamweight, how guys choose to operate with range and whatnot when when these guys are only separated by you know inch inch and a half and whatnot. Pauls and um, it kind of was what it was, you know. He he started out uh, touching Giovanni with some heavy work, um, good back and forth. Giovanni came to fight. I was very uh, I was very impressed with him. I was a little concerned because early in the week, uh, his opponent was still uh, TBA or TBD, whatever it is on box rec. So I wasn't sure. If it was gonna be a scanner, and that that fight was pending approval all week, but wow, I was very impressed by him. I mean, obviously some similarities in in appearance to um to um uh, Pacquiao just a little bit, but the way that he was uh, stalking uh, Greer there for the fight, uh, Greer landed some great shots and through the first two rounds, and the scanner took them very well uh, to the head. So I was a little uh, concerned. Obviously, at the end of that third round, uh, Greer, uh, I had noticed that the defense actually came. He, he came out with the defense a little tighter, realizing that uh, it was going to be, that a scanner was going to be here for a while. So I thought he tightened up the defense, was moving a little bit better, uh, sticking and moving. And uh, then he gets to the end of the round and gets a little careless, gets trapped against the ropes, tries to skate out skirt out to the right and um, at the bell and gets dropped. Uh, I was kind of concerned. and uh, But he got up quickly, you know, probably a little embarrassed. But, you know, he's a kid with one loss on his record already. And, uh, you know, I, it's, I don't think it's about being perfect and, and uh, you know, showing that he can't be hurt, et cetera, et cetera. He's a fighter. And, you um, you know, coming from the background that Kriegel, you know, elaborated on. And, uh, you know, he's here to, to, to go out here and chase some dreams. But coming back into the fourth round, 
Um, I had notes that he was inside early banging. Uh, yeah, yeah. He got a, a scanner on the ropes. Really uh, laid into him with, uh, you know, six, seven, eight, maybe even ten shots. Looking like he was going for the knockout himself, getting a little bit of payback. I um, think up to that point, I made a note that it was 56 to 38 in power shots. Um, you know, from rounds five, uh, Escanner's still taking um, Greer's power pretty tough. I mean, pretty well, uh, especially at the, I had at the 145 mark. It was a good one, too, by uh, Greer that uh, Escanner took really well. And uh, towards the end of that round, it was some great anticipation that, that, that Greer showed. They were commenting about him getting caught by that right hand and uh, stay, needing to stay off the ropes. And um, at the end of that fifth round was when I saw him really uh, picking up on the right hand. He ducked out of the way and spin, um, slid out to his left and uh, made uh, a scanner miss, you know, badly. And it kind of looked like the fight was turning around or turning in um, the momentum was turning in Greer's favor. So, uh, you know, I started getting a little more comfortable that he was going to pull this thing out. Um, round six, uh, you know, he started to take control, although Escanner had a left uppercut uh, and overhand right. It was a good punch that round. Um... In the seventh and eighth, getting to the end of this, I thought it was very smart. I liked how he changed the location of the fight. Greer Jr. kept it in the middle of the ring, uh, made it a little bit more physical, stayed uh, shoulder to chest pretty much, and slipping off of him, landing some shots. His work, uh, scanner's work rate had come down, and uh, it was time to get in and, and put him away. And, uh, you know, a scanner was still landing some shots here and there, but... Um, with them being inside and and um, Greer picking up on what he was doing and, and, and looking at just doing some great in, in fighting. Uh, he was able to slip off of him and uh, tuck that right hand into the body and dropped uh, a scanner and he wasn't able to continue. Uh, so good win. Um, you know, I, I don't know, grade wise, if you want to get all into that. I just thought it was a performance to uh, where he learned, where he where he learned a lot. Um, you know, I, tough night at the office, but I think it was good to be in tough. You know, you kind of wonder how you how these guys, you know, know something or know good things about these these international opponents that he's facing out of these over at top rank. It's hard to get some, um, you know, the matchmakers at top rank. You know, good job. Like I said, great fight. Made set the card off really nice, set us up for uh, and, and in winning that Greer moves to uh, 20 wins, 12 knockouts. Uh, be interesting to see what they do with him next, but that got us set up. And I thought it was pretty smart to come right off of the uh, the celebrity all star game that I didn't get to check out, but to start with um, you know, don't blink with Joshua Greer and him and all his showmanship and you know, the the pillow and ring attire and all of that. And then, like I said, the scanner was really a bonus tonight to see a, a tough guy, heavy-handed, I mean, a good puncher, and uh, got some rounds in and made it interesting. Brought, brought us to uh, Michaela Mayer and uh, Yariella Lario. I'm sorry if I'm messing her name up. I had to go cook and wasn't uh, taking notes during that. But um, Mayer is just, uh, you know, she's she's typically going to be taller than a lot of her opponents, uh, she uses that to her advantage well. She may have dropped that first round. Uh, Larios was looking really tough um, and, and and was countering well, was working that left hook. Um, you know, she might have snuck. She, I mean, on the cards, I guess, she got two of the uh, judges. She got the first round for that. But from there on, uh, you know, Mayer listens to her coaches, Al uh, Mitchell and um, – She's, I don't want to say she's basic, but she's very fundamentally sound. She stays, uh, she, she takes instructions well. She adapts good uh, and just fights really smart generally. 
And uh, even though she is taller, she she doesn't um, leave herself out there to get countered and whatnot too much. She comes in with that that uh, right hand up, and uh, you know as she's working her way inside behind the jab, she constantly works behind the jab. She's a uh, you know a good amount of uh, pressure. Uh, you know she just started beating Larios up. Uh, and I, I, I let me should have wrote her name down. I hate if I'm mispronouncing her name or got the wrong last name. But she just wore it down in that seventh and eighth round, and I thought she might have got the stoppage at the end of that seventh. She comes back out in the eighth, still smart, uh, fighting tall, fighting smart, and uh, you know Larios. I was surprised that she uh, she finished the fight, but uh, she was tough. Um, good fight, good women's fight, and uh, somewhat you know competitive. But still, you know, uh, Mayor wins by unanimous decision. Uh, she's been working her tail off the last year, uh, year and a half, uh, 10 fights or something to her credit. So uh, we'll see where she goes. Leading us into the night's main event. Man, Rob Brandt, Tayshawn Prince, uh, you know, uh, shout out to him, man. Great fight. I didn't know anything about Bay Sangarove or Bay Sangarove, but... Um, you know the kid was um he was very stiff. Pause. You know he fought a uh, tall, very upright. Uh, he followed Brand around all night. Brand is a high volume dude that you just cannot do that with. You, he's gonna make you pay. Uh, he couldn't get to any angles. He was online all night. Um, Kason was, and um, you know one thing that I you know ninety three. Punches in the first round, 71 in the second, 100 in the third. Um, the the knockdown was in the second. That was a tough punch because it was uh, probably behind the ear at the base of the uh, skull and whatnot. But he got up from it in pretty good shape. Um, Besangaro was just, he was rushed all night, could never get his feet set. He was looking for the perfect for perfect openings. He just wasn't going to get that with uh, with Rob Brandt. Uh, Brandt's got a very inter interesting style. I mean, he's uh, like I said, high volume. Uh, one thing that I, I saw that was very uh, dope about his style, uh, he kept he kept he got full extension on his punches all night. I know he and then I know they mentioned that he gets over his front knee and whatnot, and he, he's out there. But the one thing about it is he's, he's throwing punches in bunches usually. So it's not like, I mean, you can make him pay on that jab maybe. But after that, I mean, that he, he, his punches are generally straight. He didn't throw a lot of wide punches. Um, and everything is pumping, you know, or it's right off the shoulder. It's, it's not a lot of, uh, it's very economical. And uh, if you're going to do something, I mean, it's going to take precise timing. And obviously, Besangaro, you know, wasn't at that level to pull off uh, that. Uh, he didn't do a lot of body punching. And that's mainly because he was following him around all night and just couldn't get in, couldn't get ahead, uh, couldn't keep him in the ropes. Um, you know, he was turning, uh, uh, Brand was turning, turning him. And then springing onto him with, uh, you know, two and three punches. And just, um, it, it got into the fifth round before I really started noticing a lot of single punches from Brandt. But um, he run him in, ran him into, ran Basanga Rob into a nice straight left, uh, long left, that uh, really seemed like that started the, uh, the blood flowing from his nose that happened over the next uh, several rounds. Um, he exploded on him the last 90 seconds of round seven, really sat down on some shots and just imposed his will, beating, um, you know, the fight out of, of, of the kid and, um, you know, keeping the pressure on him. And, um, you know, after the eighth, I thought that was an awesome moment from Eddie Mustafa that, uh, you know, I don't know what to tell you. I can't, it, you know, you could talk too much or you could, uh, Coach a guy, you, you you can just talk unnecessarily, which I'm doing here almost at 15 minutes. But I thought that was an awesome moment. You know, it's a, I thought all the coaches were fantastic tonight. Pullman, um, Al Mitchell, and uh, Mustafa, great night for all of that. Even the commentators, 
everything that I thought I was noticing within 10 seconds or something, they said it or they said it, you know, right before I thought it. So I thought it was a hell of a show, man. Um, after that, in around nine, you know, uh, Brent came out. I just wrote down same old same. Uh, around ten uh, was was the best round probably in a while for Bay Sangaro. Uh, good left hand. I mean, I, it was actually a good straight right. It was a left uh, like kind of throwaway jab with the straight right. But then um, RB uh, or Brent turned him and gets back you know, two or three shots on him and kind of makes him pay for that. And uh, just not to let him get any confidence, not not to let him start feeling encouraged in any way whatsoever. Uh, what else on here? And then get, getting into round 11, um, I like that Brandt went for the knockout. You know, he was in front of his hometown. You know, if, they, if your promoter does that to uh puts it together to bring you back and feature you in front of your hometown and you got a guy in front of you that you can get out of there uh he's a, he's an interesting um middleweight he's a he's a um a guy that probably a lot of us weren't talking about before tonight obviously he had the big upset of uh Murata, but um you know at the at a, at, a, at about a minute and 45 or whatever uh brand exploded Got the first knockdown with the with the combination. Uh comes right back, closes the show. Uh, like I said, the thing that I noticed, man, he they they critiqued him or criticized him for, for being out over in front of that knee and whatnot. But like I said, it's it's always uh punches and bunches. And you know, like I said, it's gonna take a very talented guy, a very talented and experienced fighter to make him pay and to uh cause him some problems. With that as being a flaw, but um, that could be somebody the caliber of uh, you know the winner of Jacobs and um, and uh, Canelo, and honestly, his type of volume with good power, Jacobs tending to you know, I don't know, I I, I think I think he, I might side with him just based on um his length. Pause and um and his uh his his activity and busyness and I just think I don't know at this point if um Jacobs wants to uh work that much you know I think that's been my problem with him is that sometimes the moment as big as it is uh for Jacobs and he doesn't always work as much as I think he should be working to 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 not leave it in the hands of the judges and uh, you know have one of the crazy cars that we see in boxing so. I might take a, I might lean towards Brent over uh Jacobs in the head to head, but that's premature. Um seems like he has a lot of options. The one thing that I don't understand, uh when we get to when people are out here talking this duck talk and being mad about some of the different uh moves in boxing, you know, some people complaining about Miller and Joshua. Um I I thought it it was crazy that they were actually talking about um, that that's a viable fight for him to for Brant to face a uh, Horn, you know, over in Brisbane, and it's what the hell is Horn done? You know, you you put away Anthony Mundine, who was shot and barely touched the man, and the man was dead against the ropes and whatnot, and that somehow lined you up for a a middleweight uh title fight. And I thought that fight was at a super welterweight. So how the, how the hell is Jeff Horn jumping around in line? So that's what I'm saying. I say all that to say I don't know how folks get mad about some of this, some stuff, but then uh, endorse or advocate other moves. But that's neither here nor there. A solid uh, night of boxing. I was a little disappointed with some of the action on the, the uh, ESPN Plus stuff tonight. Uh, Tyler Howard had a tough night. And that it, there was a bad card on there that only had him winning what uh, or losing one round. When that clearly, uh, Olivus, Olivus, Olivus. Uh, did I even write his first name down? Christian Olivus uh, clearly uh, was it made it a competitive fight. So look, I'm almost hitting 20 minutes. Hate trying to hate going that long, but you know I just talked about three different fights. Um, Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, please subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button. And, and uh, 
you know, whatever you can find in your heart to uh, support a brother. Uh, actually, I'm getting ready to go back now and watch this Showtime fight with Ergen Shev and Fox in the uh, in the main event. So, again, like I said, with the oh, well, I won't say that here, but you know, using these apps and uh, you know, we have fights that overlap and whatnot. You got to make sure that um, you know, you're gonna be able to whatever you decide to watch real time. That on that other program, you know, there's a way to watch the entire card. If it's something on there that you don't want to miss. You got to be a little thoughtful in, 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 in some of this stuff. So, uh, hey, I'm out. Again, my name is Wood. Bite down boxing the class, in keeping class in boxing. And uh, I'm out. Peace.